This is one of several how-to videos that we at Lisica have put together to assist you in the field. Over the next few minutes, we'll show you the step-by-step -step process that you should take to install Lisica shock absorbers, or snubbers as they are often called. Lisica snubbers are the highest quality snubber in the market. In fact, they are the only snubber line that the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission has approved to receive testing exceptions at the nuclear plants that contain 100% Lisica snubbers in their test sample. This NRC approval saves the plant hundreds of thousands of dollars in testing during many of the fuel outages. Refer to ASME code case OMN-15 for details. We at Lisica have designed our snubbers to be maintenance free for the life of the plant. So rest assured that you have bought the best. Shock absorbers, or snubbers as they are usually called, are designed to allow slow pipe movements that occur during normal thermal growth. Under normal operating conditions, our hydraulic snubbers do not have any recommended maintenance for the first 20 years. However, if the snubbers are connected to something that is consistently or excessively vibrating, then the lifespan will be shortened. Before we go any further, let's take a look at the components that make up a typical snubber assembly. This is a weld-on bracket. It's attached to the fixed wall of the structural steel and acts as an anchor for the snubber assembly. The bracket comes with a locking pin that is held in place with the C-clips. They slide through just like this. And then you have an additional clip to lock it in place on the other side. This is a snubber paddle. The paddle slides into the bracket like this and then the pin slides through like this. You may have to work it a little bit to get it through. Then the second C-clip will go on the back side of your pin and that is what locks everything into position. Next we have the snubber itself. It is made of two main parts, the shroud and the reservoir body. The shroud has a slightly larger diameter than the reservoir body and its main function is to protect the piston rod. In this cutaway model you can see the piston rod is located here. The reservoir body is easily identified by the rings which we have cut in it. The rings are cut into the body every 10 millimeters regardless of the size of the snubber. Here is a smaller snubber and a larger snubber and you can see that the rings are cut every 10 millimeters in both cases. The edge of the shroud and the rings work together to let you know where the snubber is along its travel range. As thermal growth happens, the shroud will move over the body as I am demonstrating here. By counting the rings starting from one end of the body to the edge of the shroud, you can calculate where the snubber is currently located in its travel. For example, this snubber has four inches or 100 millimeters of travel range. You can see that we have 10 rings or 100 millimeters of travel. Also, you can see here that we have cut additional rings into the body along the last 20 millimeters of travel at each end. These extra rings will tell you visually that the snubber is nearing its end of the travel range. In general, the snubber should not be operating in the last 10 millimeters of the travel range. If you ever see that the snubber is near fully compressed or near fully extended during operation or in an outage, then there's likely a problem that needs to be addressed. Now, on this end of the snubber, or the shroud end of the snubber, you will always have a type of paddle that connects directly to the piston rod. So now let's go to the other end. On this end of the snubber, you can have either another paddle, like this one, or you will have a snubber extension such as this one. Now we make snubber extensions in all shapes and sizes and in lengths. The snubber extensions allow the snubber to cover a much broader range of pin-to-pin -pin possibilities. Paddles and extensions both contain a spherical bearing located here. This is to allow an off-axis movement. The spherical bearings are also part of the snubber that connects to the weld-on bracket or clamp. 
but we will discuss that further in a minute. Okay, now let's talk about the way to direct the snubber assembly during installation. You can see the assembly has a snubber end and an extension end. Whenever possible, position the snubber end of the assembly so that it is farthest away from the pipe or the vessel it is attached to, and the lighter end, the extension end, of the assembly towards the pipe clamp or vessel. The idea is to keep as much mass as possible away from the moving pipe or vessel. Since the snubber end has more mass than the extension end, the extension end should be the nearest to the pipe or the vessel. Sometimes the space available will not allow you to install the assembly this way, but that is our recommendation whenever possible. This is the sight glass where you can inspect the hydraulic fluid. Try to install the snubber so that the sight glass is visible from the nearest observation point. The hydraulic fluid is normally so clear that you cannot see it. If you look through the glass and you see only the color of stainless steel, such as in the picture you're looking at now, then all is good. If you ever see the brass color of the reservoir piston inside like this picture, then this means the snubber has lost some fluid and needs to be rebuilt or replaced immediately. If you look through the sight glass and see brown or black fluid inside, this means the snubber is experiencing vibration and needs to be rebuilt during the next outage. Dark fluid is not related to any kind of breakdown in the hydraulic seals. Constant vibration will actually change the characteristics of the hydraulic fluid and cause the fluid to turn dark. If you ever notice dark fluid, that would be a great time to start addressing the root cause of the vibration and make the necessary changes. Also, it is a great time to put together a plan for the snubber rebuild or replacement. Okay, now let's talk about the snubber piston rod, which again you can see is located here on this cutaway model. To protect the piston rod as much as possible during shipment, Lysica will fully retract the snubber assembly before shipping them. So before you attempt to install it, the snubber assembly has to be extended to the proper amount so that the spherical bearings match the pin-to-pin -pin attachment points at the installation location. If you are installing more than one snubber, it is our recommended procedure that before installing any of them, that you measure and record the actual pin-to-pin -pin measurement at every installation location and then extend all of the snubber assemblies to their correct position in advance of installing them. Normally when snubbers are installed, they are somewhere near the middle of the travel range, but this is not always the case. As an example, let's say that the location of your first snubber assembly you are going to install you record a pin-to-pin -pin measurement of 15 inches. Next, you measure the pin-to-pin -pin of the new assembly that we just shipped you. Remember, we shipped it in a fully retracted position. As we see here, the new assembly measures 12 and 3 eighths inches, pin-to-pin. -pin. So you would subtract 12 and 3 eighths from 15 inches, and now you know you should extend the new assembly two and five eighths inches so that it matches the installation point. Write this number down and then continue this process until you have recorded exactly how much you need to extend each snubber assembly. After you have recorded all the pin to pin measurements and know how much to extend each assembly, your next step will be to extend all of the snubber assemblies to their correct installation length. There are two common methods to extend the length of a snubber, and you will use one method or the other depending on the load group of the snubber. On smaller snubbers, up to a load group four or so, you can normally extend them by simply pulling them apart with your hands. On larger snubbers, the best method is to hang the snubber assembly from something convenient at your site. Hang it from a nearby chain fall or a forklift, for example. It is best if you hang the snubber assembly so that most of the weight is at the bottom of the assembly as we have done here. 
This will allow the weight of the assembly to help extend the snubber to the correct position. Here again, if the snubber does not start to extend once it's hanging, then try twisting the snubber body to start the movement. You can see the weight of the extension has already started the movement. Now once the snubber has starts to extend, you will need to stop it when it gets to the correct pin length. This is typically done by removing the assembly from the chain fall or placing it gently back on the ground. And that will stop the movement of the snubber. If you pull and the snubber does not move, try twisting one of the two halves while pulling. The twisting is often necessary to start the movement of the snubber. Make note that if you pull or push the snubber halves too hard, back pressure will develop on the disc of the main control valve and close the valve which locks the snubber. Then you will need to push or pull gently to get the snubber to move. By following the practices you have just seen, you should save enormous amounts of time and have a very successful installation. If there is anything else we at Lissiga can do to help, please give us a call. Thanks for your business.